this time of the show, I'd like to bring in Tom Alexander, founder of Alexander Trading LLC. Tom, welcome. Good to have you with us here this Friday morning. Happy Friday. Thanks to you and to you as well, Tom. Uh, price activity we're seeing this week uh, in the ES. Let's start there. The rejection of the recent lows in all four of the major indices as investors continue to focus on the positive and, well, as I've been saying for a while, discount the negative. Oh, it's been the most bid market we've seen in a long, long time, Ben. And Ed, and uh, I know you, 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 you agree with that. The uh, really interesting thing to me is the rejection off of those lows. Yeah. And then, you know, we've had follow through for the past three days. And yeah. what I look for when I'm looking at the, uh, the the market, I'm looking at the four primary U.S. trading indices. I'm looking at the SBX, the NDX, the Dow, and of course the Russell. And you know, the Russell has been sort of the odd man out. Uh, since the beginning of the year, but it has shown a lot of life the last three days, along with the other three primary U.S. trading indices. I think that is a net positive for the market and certainly goes on the bullish side of the ledger going forward, Tom, let even me though we're remarkably extended. I, okay, remarkably extended, which is I want to pick that thought up in just a second, but I wanted to interrupt you for a second because follow through, I think, is key here, right? You mentioned the follow through we've seen off of those lows. And you also mentioned the fact that we didn't see a lot of follow through into those lows, right? We posted the new lows uh, on Tuesday, I think it was, in reaction to the CPI number, but there was no uh, follow through, no more further selling. The selling basically dried up. A lot of people think of it as like, okay, a lot of buyers came in down there, but you talk to us about how it's more really a situation where the selling dried up. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, it wasn't just, uh, I mean, it, it started occurring that day. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the close was actually pretty constructive. I mean, well, the, we were uh, just off an all time high on Monday. Yeah. 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 And, and, and then you had the big dip on, right. the, on the, the surprise number, but then the market rallied really strongly into the close and then gapped up. Uh, what was it, Wednesday? Here's the chart so, here. We're looking at it right now. 5066 down to 4936. I mean, 130 points to the downside. And then that sharp rally back. I mentioned at the top of the show, we're just shy of that all-time high. Tom, real quick, I want to put this into perspective because here you can see where we are relative to last week's highs and lows. So we took out last week's highs, sold off, but look, right down to last week's lows, unable to take that out with any conviction. That's where that selling dried up, just like it did last week, if you remember. And then I just want to show you one more step back where we are on the bigger picture relative to last month's highs, right? We're holding above those convincingly. And look at this here, above the 50, above the 200-day moving average here, Tom, I mean, uh, lots of positive to focus on, right? You got Fed chat, Ecodata stocks at all time highs, creating this wealth effect, well defined trend up. But sustainability, I feel like, comes into question when you see a, a rally like this off the lows that we've seen uh, from last fall. You mentioned overextended. Uh, talk to us a little bit more about that and why we should be concerned, or should we? Well, yeah, I think I think we should be. I mean, the market is. I don't think it can tend, It's possible to continue up at the same rate of change yeah. that it that we've seen since this uh, late October low. And to me, the magnitude of the rally off that October low is really. I mean, it's it, it it's quite significant. It's up there with uh, rallies of the, of similar time frame. Uh, that I've seen, can recall seeing in the past five or 10 years. Yeah. What is even more remarkable to me is the lack of retracement against mm. the rally. Okay. You, and you have these one, two day wonder declines and yeah. then it, it, you rip back higher. So I think at some point, probably before the end of, in, end of the first quarter, you're going to begin to see a more rotational market on a day-to-day -day basis okay. that includes deeper retracements and then a wider trading range before you go ripping higher again. Okay. So far, it's just been dip and rip. Okay, I like that. Uh, can't continue at this rate, right? Uh, uh, sustainability becomes a question at this point, but that's not necessarily a sell signal either, right? Trend is still to the upside here, so that's like stepping in front of a freight train. You've taught me in the past here, but uh, lack of retracement uh, to the downside kind of ties into what we were talking about a minute ago in terms of lack of follow-through, right? To the downside, oh, the inability oh. to, to take out key levels that were established on the way up. Yes, yes. You know, we, we've had basically we've had a crash up, Ben. We're, right. we're having we're having <laughs> panic buying yeah. in all of the indices, and yeah. you know, the Russell joined the party. Now, the Russell, interestingly enough, well, wait, hold is, on, hold on one sec, Tom. I'm sorry to interrupt you again, but I, I we both have a lot of energy that we bring to this conversation. So, so I really want to parse this out a little bit. Let's take a look at these charts here because I mentioned again all the positives that we're seeing here. Uh, earlier in the week, we had the reaction of the CPI, so that dip was somewhat limited, sort of feeding into that. 
bullishness. Here we've got the ES. It's not just the S&Ps. I've got the Dow in the middle, Tom. I've got the NASDAQ on the right. And there is or has been some concern about that uh, lack of breadth associated with this rally, right? How it's these big tech names that are really fueling things. But you can see we are getting some participation from the Dow, from the S&Ps here as well. But, but it has been a bit more of a, a, well, a limited rally in terms of some of these names that are leading. Oh, no question about it. But, you know, who's going to tell us when that stops? I mean, that, right. that's they don't the ring issue. a bell. That, that's right. They're <laughs> not going to ring a bell. And when you have all of the indices showing the same level of, of directional conviction, which we've seen for the past three days now, so I know it's only three days, but that's a positive sign. Yeah. Uh, now, the Russell is just at its December high. Right. The and outlier. You want, to, you want to see that follow through and 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 take that level out. But if and of course at 8:30 we're going to have all these numbers that mm -hmm. come out, so mm -hmm. that could shake things up uh, short term. But as long as Wednesday's lows hold, I mean that's the low now. You know that that's the low you're looking at. As long as that holds, you have to be biased to the long side in this market. Okay, Tom mentioned the 8.30 data here. Let's check in on that real quick because after the CPI numbers and the, the market reaction that we touched on here a minute ago, this the 120 plus points that it was to the downside, uh, this number is going to get scrutinized quite a bit. we got PPI headed our way in just a couple minutes. Uh, the top line number expected to come in at uh, 0 0.1, prior down 0 0.1. Uh, X food and energy, so uh, uh, minus the food and energy, the month over month expected to also come in up 0 0.1, prior was 0, 0.0. So we're expecting a little bit of an uptick there. We'll keep an eye on that. Uh, we also, in addition to the PPI data, housing starts building permits. I think this one's going to get a little bit overshadowed by the inflation figures. Housing starts expected to come in at 1.470 million permits at 1.510 both a bit of an increase from the prior levels we've seen housing recovering a bit here with uh, uh, some of the lower rates here but let's talk a little bit more about uh, that lack of participation in terms of the Russell because just getting back to this chart here real quick Tom mentioned how we're right back to those December levels but I want to show you here as you take a look at that longer term chart here Tom you can see we're well off those all-time highs we're going back to 2021 up around 2460. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh no, no question about it. And and that that's what I mean. Longer term, that's a real issue. Yeah. Uh, you know, the market can go up another. Um, you know, the other indices can go up ten or fifteen percent, and you still might not have the Russell taking out that high. So that long term is an issue. But short term, it's certainly a positive that over the past three days we've seen the Russell participate with the other three indices. Tom, it's not uncommon. I feel like over the years we've uh, seen the Russell be a bit of an outlier, right? While we get these yes. other really well-defined trends in the other majors. So uh, kind of along the same lines of the thought that I had earlier, a market that's overextended, that's overbought kind of quote unquote, right? You just made it real clear. We've seen markets rip higher in overbought conditions and crash in oversold conditions. Uh, so those kind of words or those phrases that we use to categorize price activity uh, don't necessarily uh, equate into trade signals, right? I mean, uh, to see the Russell lagging does not necessarily mean fade the other three major indices because uh, the broader base, the Russell 2000, isn't participating. No, especially when you've seen the strength that we've seen in the right, Russell the, trend. the past three. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, what people don't realize is, is that the, the, the incredible rally into the end of the year was led by the Russell. Okay. It was up on, on a percentage basis more than the other three indices. But, of course, it, you know, then it had uh, a bigger retracement. But as you say, the Russell can sort of be its own animal at times. Last thought here, Tom, as we close out the discussion here, uh, kind of wrap it all up for us. Put it in a box and, box and wrap a bow around it for us in terms of a little bit of words of wisdom to uh, investors, to traders at current levels here. Oftentimes we feel like, uh, well, you get that FOMO feeling like you have to chase. Uh, but obviously in a trend like this, you've had to be a bit more aggressive if you wanted to participate in it. Unfortunately, now as we get at these overextended levels, that becomes a little bit more riskier and riskier, I feel like. Yeah, I th I, th I think that you know patience uh, typically pays off when when you're trading okay. or in investing, and I think we're going to see deeper retracements uh, develop in the market, and I think there'll be opportunities to buy. You know, if when in doubt, stay out and or just trade very lightly. I but like you got to be at this point, Ben. As long as this week's lows hold, you've got to be biased to the long side of this market. All right, like patience, uh, opportunities, biased to the long side of the market. When in doubt, 
stay out, right? Sounds to me like Tom would agree, as we always say, flat is a position. So uh, uh, lots to keep an eye on here, Tom, and appreciate the, the breakdown, the, the look at the indices this morning as we are and hold near these all-time highs into the end of the week and reject the lows from earlier in the week. I'd agree with Tom. That's a key level to watch here. Tom Alexander, founder of Alexander Trading LLC. Thanks to you, Tom.